Morning, everyone. Happy, happy Friday. It is February 25th. It is the day before 12 hour live and we are wrapping up our week here on daily drop in. We have the one and only Brad Hughes here with us. Like always, that's how you know it's going to be a good Friday. We have to recap the week. We've got a really good theme on small goals that can work towards those big dreams that we have. We also, of course, will have our good news articles, some holidays, and we will also preview what's coming next week. There's a lot going on on the Teach Better team next week, so that might need to be its own show right there. Either way, please go fill up your coffee, get your toothbrush ready to get started for the day, and we'll be right back. Morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Hey, Brad, how you doing? Hey, good morning, Ray. I'm doing great. Happy Friday to you. Always excited to kick off a Friday morning with our weekly daily drop-in rendezvous. It's fantastic. I hope you've had a good week, friend. How are you? It's been a good week. It's been a busy week. And I feel mm -hmm. like as educators, we know that, you know, sometimes it's a it's a strong busy week. Sometimes it's a chaotic busy week. Today, it felt like a little bit of a chaotic busy week. But I mean, hey, we made it to Friday, so I'm I'm living for it. It's great. I think as uh, as much as we can, if we can be sort of uh, guideposts or the calm in the middle of the storm as chaos is going around us. I mean, each of us has a role to play, just to you know guide people through tough times, confusing times, stressful times, and just uh, you know then you've got some space to look back and say, okay, hey, what was the outcome, and what did we learn as a result? It's so true, and I will say, I mean, right or wrong, it really was a crazy week full of really good things, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when those crazy weeks, weeks happen in schools and you found yourself that, yeah, you got off task a lot, but you got off task a lot because you were giggling with students or there was something <laughs> funny that happened or there was a birthday that got you kind of like off track celebrating with somebody. So I, I really won't complain. It was it was a good week and uh, thrilled to be here live with you. Good morning to everyone that's here with us as we stream currently on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. If you're listening after the fact on Teach Better Talk podcast, we are thrilled that you are here. Thank you for subscribing and rating and review our podcast, as well as sharing this uh, show on all your platforms so that we can also reach new educators to be part of the daily drop-in morning show. Brad, when you think about your week, I mean, it's Friday. I haven't talked to you, I feel like, all week. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like it was more or less a success, like, like a good week overall? Absolutely. I mean, my early in my week, my week started with an auto collision. Uh, and so that's not the best way to start one's week, but I'm really grateful that uh, there were no injuries. Uh, the damage was minor uh, and really grateful. Uh, and what's really memorable for me is the work of a good Samaritan, a, a passerby who happened to be following me uh, into the line of another car who stopped, took pictures of the scene, made sure that both drivers were okay, uh, supported the other driver. We made a police call. Anyway, she remained on scene for two hours along with me. Uh, and I mean that, so, you know, when we talk about our gratitude and our, uh, and our gratitude app and moments of gratitude, grateful for the kindness of a stranger who could have kept on going by, but knew the right thing to do was to stop, make sure everyone, everyone was okay. And mm -hmm. just the kindness of all of the uh, first responders, uh, the police officers, uh, the kindness of people on the phone who are helping me through the insurance, uh, kindness of people doing my estimate yesterday, like everyone was really kind. And I said back to these folks, you know, it. It's really remarkable because you really recognize that you're in the people business. I mean, you're you're not about taking reports. You're, you're not about uh, fixing cars. It's you're, you're recognizing that you're accompanying people through a really stressful situation. Maybe uh, if if the, if the worst case scenario, one of the most stressful or dire uh, moments of their of their life. So I'm really grateful as I look back. And this week at school, I saw staff dig in with such compassion. I saw staff respond with such speed. Uh, when there were safety issues that came up, they turned to procedure. We used communication. Uh, so, so proud of everyone that I work with. And the last thing, Ray, is just to look back and and, and say, hey, I can end the week with a good friend and with good friends on our daily drop-in. Uh, I, I have the privilege of of coming home to uh, a family uh, who helps me restore and, and recoup the energy lost through the week. So all in all, friend, it's been, uh, it's been a very full uh, and productive, but also a very gratifying week in spite of some tough times. 
I really, really am so thrilled that you and everybody involved are okay. It's mm -hmm. it's so tricky, especially during terrible weather for, for I'm so just appreciative of that. That's wonderful. And we discussed it. It kind of came up on yesterday's show. Um, we, we had interviewed uh, Rachel. For those of you who missed the show, Thursday was such a fun discussion with an aspiring educator and her focus on how she was striving to find her way towards education, right? She would focus on nursing first, then she was going into law, then she finally found her way to education. What her reflection was that those were all businesses, those were all organizations, those were all career paths that focused on people. Now this morning, bringing that up again, that everybody involved in um, you know, a, a challenging situation this week, again, came down to how can we support and you know people? Um, I love that mm -hmm. focus, the reminder that even even regardless of our field, regardless of our our to do list, um, we are here to make sure that we are bettering the world and supporting the people around us. Very powerful. Very powerful. I'd love to hear about any highlights or learnings or you know bright spots of your week too, Ray. What's going on? Oh gosh, I mean, there's always something to celebrate, right? Nothing, yeah. nothing bad there. Um, I was just involved in a lot of meetings this week that were planning projects for our teach better community which i'm sure you guys understand like you know there's so many things that we like to do um and so many things that we do consistently obviously the daily drop-in show is mm -hmm. it's here for to support all of you monday through friday that's been consistent since august 2nd uh, we have not missed a day that that wasn't um you know we always love to be here for all of you um but geez brad i mean you and i were in a meeting i think it was monday that feels like three weeks ago <laughs> sure uh, where we were problem solving through supporting a specific component of our community. We came up with a really exciting event that will be happening mm -hmm. early this summer that we haven't announced yet. Uh, we were doing our final preparation for 12 hour live, which is tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern. There's so much excitement there. We we're able to get so many Teach Better faces a part of that event. We're so excited. Uh, we were discussing the fact that we're announcing our keynote next week. Early bird registration is ending for the Teach Better conference. There's just a lot going on. And we also, I don't know how many of you um, have like officially seen it because I don't know that it's like official, officially announced yet, but you know, next month is a big month for us. Proposals open. We have our Teach Better birthday happening. Uh, we have um, uh, the opening, the public opening of people joining Podcasters Row for the conference. We'll have a bookstore at the conference. I mean, it literally on and on and on exciting things. And that doesn't even skim the surface, the meeting I had yesterday supporting, um, welcoming in new ambassadors to the Teach Better family that later this year. So just really busy, exciting meetings for all of our Teach Better community to hopefully benefit from. There's a lot of ingredients, Ray, to the secret sauce that makes Teach Better uh, such an incredible community. I think a couple of the ingredients are service and what mm -hmm. you're describing is everything is designed to lift, elevate, and support teachers and educators. Everything that we do, everything that we attempt to do, the other secret ingredient, I think, is surprise. I, I think if anyone is watching or listening and and can just sense the excitement, the sincerity, the the happiness of any of our Teach Better uh, team members, it's because we have uh, surprises in store and we love to be constantly on the move and constantly looking for new and incredible opportunities to bring to our Teach Better family. So those are a couple of ingredients, and I would love to know if anybody uh, in our comments can sense any of the other secret ingredients that makes uh, Teach Better such a wonderful family or what makes your school community such a wonderful family? What, what's in the secret sauce, guys? We'd love to hear from you. I will say, Brad, the other thing that is so random that I want to say as a positive, but it might be something that people in our community would benefit from, and I'm not sure how to like, how much to go into it. But Brad, there's an app that I downloaded very similar to Happy Feed recently. And I am not somebody who spends a lot of time on my phone that's not work related. Like Happy Feed, I really love. We'll obviously get into that for the show here in just a second. Um, but it's like a moment of my day. It's an intentional moment. And then I get to close the app and not think about it for another 24 hours. Do you know what I mean? Right. I have another app here that um, you would, I, I think the intention of it is to connect it with a spouse or a significant other. Mm -hmm. You can connect it with a best friend, um, somebody that you are fostering a relationship with. And it's called A-G-A-P-E. I don't, mm -hmm. Okay. So have you heard of this before? No, but I've heard of the word. Actually, the word came up in a dinner table discussion uh, while we were watching Jeopardy, and it, it's agape. Yeah, agape. So yep. this app, and I just learned about it. I'm on the second day using mm -hmm. it because I was just exploring it. And what it does is that every 12 hours, it pushes a question, a random question, to you and whoever you are fostering 
this, you know, friendship or, or, or romantic relationship with, and you answer it and you can't see each other's answers until you both respond. And it mm. kind of creates some discussion. So some of the questions that we've experienced so far, one focused on resolving conflict. It was really a healthy dialogue around how you, how you resolve conflict, you know, between one another. Um, the other had to do with like a funny memory or something that you think of when you see something, um, you know, that pops up, makes you think of the other person. It's a really interesting app. And I, I originally heard about it because a friend uh, was actually using it with his spouse and they actually did this together um, once or twice a day where they were exchanging funny questions and kind of giving each other a boost in their day. So mm -hmm. if any of you are looking to, uh, for a, a little opportunity to spice up a, a friendship or a romantic relationship that you're in that you want to have kind of that that deeper connection with, could be a cool app. I'm really enjoying it. And after the show, I get I have a I have a timer that reminds me at seven o'clock to do it. So I'm excited to be a part of that too. Really, really cool. I've been watching or reading recently with a lot of interest, encouragement, especially for school leaders to seek feedback from the teams that they serve about how are they doing? And then like, no, really, <laughs> no, really, how am I doing? Don't tell me what you think I want to hear. Tell me, am I communicating with you successfully? Am, am I expressing empathy, concern, and care even through tough times? Uh, that's the number one thing for communication. I think with any, uh, with any romantic, with any personal, with any friendship, with any work relationship is even through tough times, if you can communicate the care, uh, mm -hmm. if the person walks away, even from a tough conversation, knowing, okay, that person invested that time because they care about me and want me to be successful. I'm curious if there's like, like agape for workplace teams. I've used Google Forms to see that kind of feedback and and received some really remarkable and eye-opening results that have helped me to, you know, to really refine what I do and how I do it. So I'm going to see if I can uh, find agape for workplace teams as well, Ray. I think that'd be so fun. I really love the simplicity. Again, similar to Happy Feed, and we do want to give a shout out to the, the crew over at Happy Feed. They're so wonderful. We're excited to have them a part of a lot of different teach better things simply because of the actionable steps that we can take to share more gratitude in our lives. This app, again, I'm not trying to add to people's to-do list, but again, extremely simple. It's a feel good moment. And what I love about this one is you can, you know, a similar to happy feed where you can create pods and share it with others. This again is really fostering um, like a one-on-one -on -one connection which I know some people may choose to benefit from. So just kind of a cool environment. Um, I was seeing all over Twitter yesterday that a lot of our Teach Better daily drop-in family members are using Happy Feed and discussing creating pods of like a Teach Better community mm -hmm. to see each other's moments of gratitude. So regardless of what app you're using or if you're not using an app at all, um, I just love those intentional feel-good moments. That's so good. That's, I was just going to say, this is an integral Ray Hewitt daily drop in teach better moment ray i've seen you both behind the scenes in our meetings and out front saying okay wait 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 stop everything what's the practical takeaway that our listeners and viewers are going to take away and so i mean that's it we're bringing forward some things mm -hmm. that might add to the quality of your personal life which will also spill out and hopefully improve the quality of your professional life everyone you come in contact with so yeah keep bringing those app recommendations forward ray they leave our listeners and viewers with something practical to take away that's that's what you're all about and you know what, Brad, they're not apps that suck you in like those games that you like look at your phone and then you look up 25 or an hour and a half later and you're like, where have I been? Did I just lose, did I just lose an entire chunk of my day? <laughs> I'm so susceptible to articles that try to hook me in with, oh, behind the scenes and did you know and never before revealed. And honestly, I sometimes click on them. It's like scroll, 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 scroll. And actually that was never answered in the article. It's like, oh, I got sucked in. I got, I got click baited, Ray. I'm, I'm a. I'm a I'm recovering clickbait. Uh, I'm such clickbait. a I'm I'm such a sucker for it. Or like honest, honestly, like Instagram reels, like they pull me in with the funny mm -hmm. memes or or you know like the really great photography of vacation yeah. locations. And then truly, you look up, it's been four hours, and you're like, I swear I had something else I was supposed to do, like supporting my family or yeah, I don't know, have any feeling in my else. legs anymore. Like my extra, I can't feel my extremities. I've just been with on my phone for like four hours and exactly. you try to get up and like everything's tingly and you fall over and it's really embarrassing and someone has to come help you. And, but then there's an alert on the phone that, you know, okay, I've got to respond to that. And you're, you're like, Oh, exactly. So, I mean, if we're going to make recommendations, they need to be something that adds to our life that hopefully does not suck you in to distract you from other things. Speaking of Brad, we definitely need to do our happy feed for today. Yeah. Uh, as many of you know, uh, Happy Feed was recommended on the show uh, just a few weeks ago. And as the discussion went, uh, it's a free app. We connected with the team over at Happy Feed, and we really are, love and appreciate 
that it is a free app that supports you sharing a moment of gratitude every single day. Um, we really, one of the things that I really like, Brad, is that you not only share a moment of gratitude every single day, but you actually are able to revisit those memories quite easily. And so as you build up this bank of, of moments that you, you know, really appreciate day to day, um, being able to go back, you know, weeks, months, years, uh, into those kind of fun memories is something I'm very excited about. So we're currently building up our bank of daily drop-in moments of gratitude. So love seeing people share that they're using the app, love seeing people share that they're streaks. I love this. I love mm -hmm. this. Okay. Yeah. Like our Facebook user, I, I'm on a two week streak since being introduced to the app by uh, you and Rob Dunlop two weeks ago. So it, it really makes a difference. It's, it's one of the things I, you know, I've come to look forward to when I get that alert. Uh, it's, I, well, I've got my alert set up as I'm sort of winding down the day. So I've had a, a nice chance to reconnect with family and maybe just do some rest or watch some TV or, or, or something relaxing. And then it's, it puts me in a good frame of mind to do a quick reflection and it's good. Yep. Celebrating two weeks. I love the reminder too. It's a very subtle nudge and mine always comes during the show about the 10, 10 minute mark. Yeah. So I'm about five minutes late for our nudge, but that's all right. It's Friday. We're always up sure there. I also, Brad, I, I don't, I can't help it. Like my, my secret pleasure is reading the hints. Like they don't necessarily help me answer the mm -hmm. question. Sometimes I already know what I'm going to type, but I just think they're so fun. Yeah, today's I always click the hand, right? Yeah, the today's yep. hint is flip through the images on your phone. Do any of them remind you of a happy moment? And then to like click off the hint, it mm -hmm. doesn't say like close or cancel. It just says, thank you. I'm like, right. thank you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what is our moment of gratitude, Brad? Well, as I expressed to you, Ray, I'm, this week I'm grateful for the uh, the kindness of strangers. I'm grateful for the comfort of family. I'm grateful for the capacity and the capability of staff members uh, working through uh, very difficult situations with professionalism and compassion. Uh, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to finish every Friday with you. Love this. Love her. Love this. So good. So I can't wait to go back to all these and mm -hmm. be able to, to look at them. I want to incorporate that somehow into our, into our Teach Better conference yeah. is having our our happy feed jar. I need to figure out somebody who can code this for me that the happy feed jar can be like projected on our on our main stage and it can shake itself and, and reveal different memories from Daily Drop. Brilliant. It's so, fun. so fun. Brad, we need to head into our good news for the day and get mm -hmm. into some holidays before we get into recapping the week. Does that sound good? I've got a great story ready for you. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Daily Drop-In Morning Show. Brad Hughes and I are thrilled to be here on Friday, February 25th. It is just a few hours, almost exactly one full day before our 12-hour live that is happening tomorrow. We will be streaming that 12-hour free professional educator, professional development uh, over on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. These segments will also then be broken up and edited into free access in our academy. So as you're looking through the schedule of times that you might want to tune in for, guests that you might want to see speak, um, that will be an opportunity for you to catch it live, participate in the comments, but then also, of course, tune in and check it out in the academy as well for, you know, access for the rest, for the rest of eternity, right? So that will be good. <laughs> Brad, we have some holidays today. And uh, are we starting with holidays before our article? No, we're going to go straight to the article, Ray. It's going to be good news first and then holidays. I can't wait. Oh my gosh. Game changer. Hey, uh, Ray, I know that uh, we've talked on the daily drop in about how can, how sound can turn our day around. It can energize us. It can soothe us. We've even got our special uh, jingle that we groove to every Friday. And, and the story today is about how sound waves are literally changing lives. Uh, and this headline comes from goodnewsnetwork.org. And the headline is sound waves convert stem cells into bone in regenerative breakthrough, a science or research breakthrough where research have, researchers have found how to use sound waves to, to turn stem cells into bone cells. So it's a tissue engineering advance that could one day help patients regrow bone loss to cancer or other degenerative disease. Ray, I'm not sure if any of you, uh, family or friends or, or contacts, I, I can hardly think of anyone whose families haven't been touched in some uh, way by cancer. And we know the, the importance of research uh, groundbreaking research to, you know, not only help heal, but also to give hope to those that 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 uh, have this disease. And so 
uh, this this research um, it works on multiple types of cells, um, cells that are far less painful to extract from a patient. So the, the technology allows scientists and doctors to uh, bombard uh, stem cells with sound waves to to spur on growth. And I'll, I'll put this uh, tech, I'll put the link to the story in our in our notes. But Ray, you know, groundbreaking research, uh, you know, the, the power of sound uh, to heal and to give hope. Unbelievable. I do love these these good news stories that we do every single morning on the Daily Drop-In Morning Show because sometimes they're feel-goods. It makes you giggle. It's a good fun fact. I, I find the ones I, – I have never been so interested in science until mm -hmm. these good news uh, articles because, holy moly, I'm, like, learning so much about the incredible technology and innovation happening around the world, which is also so valuable to be able to bring to students. A couple, a couple of other highlights of the research ray include um, how low cost it is. I mean, one of the commentators mm -hmm. says it, it's it's low cost, and so when we think worldwide of of equitable access to care and to this kind of research, it's it's low cost, and they've learned how to manipulate the sound waves to target exactly the kind of growth they want to engender with the kind of cells they want to engender. So next time you click on your radio or or uh, or uh, Next time you click on your radio or whatever music you're listening to, and as those waves come to you and inspire and empower you, you know, think of this research that could uh, uh, really be life changing for uh, friends and family members. You know, Brad, I don't know if you remember, but last night I texted you and I said, hey, we need to do a poll on the show. Mm -hmm. I think this is the time that we can do a poll on the show and get everybody's thoughts because it has to do with data or mm -hmm. data. And that is very, you know, very obviously something that they've been collecting through this article. Uh, they have been collecting a lot of data, data, uh, and the data, data that we're pulling on is 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 it data or data, and in what context? I, you know, I, I'm not sure how much data or data you have to spur on this poll, Ray, but I'm looking forward to digging into it. Guys, I am in a big debate with a friend, and I will tell you that I, I, my solution to overcoming this debate was that I would bring it to the Daily Drop-In Show. So for those of you here this morning, I appreciate you. If you're listening to this after the fact, I need you I need you to come through for me on this <laughs> because um, truly my solution wasn't to do research to find out um, you know, what, the, what the scientists are saying. I am here to, to find or teach better community. Alex is getting where I'm going. I need to know, is it data? or data. And so what I'm thinking is, if you think it's data, I want you to put a capital A in the chat, data, capital A. If it's data, like a soft A, you can put a lowercase A. I need to know if it, if you pronounce it data or data as you were looking at, um, at, at your information before you. So a capital A would be data, like a hard A, a lowercase a would be data, which is like a, you know, data or data. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with the answers coming in so far. So we're going to keep going and we're going to come back to this here in just a second. <laughs> All capital A's. Thank you, Elijah, for the lowercase a. Come on, guys. Data or data? Usually capital A, but sometimes you can't, you can't. Alex is saying you can switch it up. Brad, what do you say? Because we did debate what what Brad Hughes would say, because Brad Hughes obviously is, you know, the god of all all information. <laughs> if I said, Brad, hey, I have some information for you. Will you look at this data? Uh, yeah, data. data. Yeah. More more frequently say data, Ray. That's right. I, I do say data sometimes. Uh, and and I may be the god of misinformation to those that <laughs> really know me. But uh, yeah, it, for me, it's it's usually data. Wow. Google says small a data. Thank you. Who yep. is that? I'm sorry that your name doesn't show up because StreamYard is blocking because you're watching over on our uh, Teach Better private group, which any of you can get access to as well at teachbettergroup.com. You can join yeah, that. Yeah, data, indi data indicates it's a great way to stay involved with the team, Ray, getting over that Facebook private group. Oh, does, does data say that or does data say that? They both say that. <laughs> Guys, this, is, this has to be a thing that... Steve. Oh, it's Steve. Hi, Steve. Good to see you. <laughs> Long A on the usual. Short comes out sometimes. I wonder yep. when people That's choose to use one or the other. If you're looking at a data set or if you're collecting data, I wonder if yep. I wonder if it has to do with 
with it being, I, I don't know, is that is that different if you're like in the process yeah. of collecting versus if you're evaluating? Does is it, are Well, you, I think you're onto something there is, is uh, if I use the word data, just data in isolation, I probably say data. But when you said data set, like I would say data set. So I wonder if if it's used as an adjective rather than as a noun. Oh. Uh, that that's where I might switch my long A and short A. Uh, Alex is wondering about the character Data. On... His name is Data, but that's yeah. like, that's his name. That's different. His name's Data. That has nothing to do with, you wouldn't call him Data. That's not his name. His name is Data. <laughs> but this is irrelevant to our discussion. <laughs> Facebook user says, I think short A sound is like the person is super smart. Data. Let's examine the data, shall we? Yeah. And <laughs> Like, like if, you're still like... Steve, if that's Steve, Steve says that's not him. <laughs> Bless you, Steve. <laughs> well, teaching grouping kids, I say both of them. See, oh, see, that's what I was saying. Like plural or sig singular is what I was trying to say as well. I will yes. say ninety nine percent. I say data, but I think that that also. I am very okay. Can I say this on the show? I'm going to get in trouble. I'm like very turned off by the Chicago accent. Like for those of you who know a Chicago accent, it's like a very aggressive. I mean, I can't think. I can't even do it right now. But mm -hmm. I wonder if I lean away from like data because it's a very like aggressive. Like a, it's that's a big mouth right. feel. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of air coming at you there. Like, and in, in terms of linguistics, it's true. Yeah, there's a lot of air, a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Data rather than mm -hmm. data, which is more passive. That ah happens. Mm -hmm. uh, in your lower jaw, back of your throat, rather than data. It's not explosive. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's like when people say like Chicago, I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. That's too much going on in your mouth. It's just Chicago. Like. <laughs> yeah. And Alex, that came to my mind too. The singular of data is, is, or data is datum. Uh, and I wonder why, you know, the Star Trek character, since there's only one of him, isn't datum, not data. Cause data, if there were two of them together, then you'd have, Hey, look, there's data over there. Let's uh, confirm if we are talking about the Star Trek character, like he's the bomb.com. Like he can go by whatever he wants. He's, fair enough. he's a great character. Yeah. Well, um, I think we've concluded that I won, but I don't think that actually. Think so. so we can. Yes. Using the data. I don't think that's what we've concluded, but I'm going to go back to my friend and tell tell them that you all said data without any negotiation and data was wrong. Is that okay with all of you? Yeah. And as the king of all, uh, of all misknowledge here over here, Ray, I've been tabulating all of the results uh, diligently on all of our uh, platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, and even some platforms where we're not streaming. I've been actually monitoring a number of other uh, 64 other social platforms, and I can confirm with uh, certainty that we've landed on data. Data is the correct uh, is the correct pronunciation. For those of you that go throughout your day today, if you find a reason to say data, I hope you get a little giggle. <laughs> like those are the moments, right? We were talking earlier about what makes Teach Better special. What's the secret sauce? What are those moments that we really like? Like I love, I love a good Teach Better inside joke. Like I, I kind of live for them. So if you can find a, a way in your day, whether it be with a colleague or with a student, to put in a little like Teach Better zinger that nobody understands except you and you get a little chuckle, that's a win for me. It's a win for everybody. Anytime mm -hmm. you can lighten a moment with some uh, f some insider humor or just uh, you know share some good feelings and share this uh, question at your work. If you want to put it on your whiteboard, for example, if you've got a staff room whiteboard, uh, data or data, and you know just take a have people do a quick check poll and then it anything that can stir up conversation and uh, and friendly debate, I think is a, a great way to. Start. I'm going to do that this morning when I get to school. I'll put that on my whiteboard. That honestly would be so wonderful. And then will you all report back what you find? Like if you post a poll on Facebook or you post mm -hmm. a poll on Twitter, or you do something at school with colleagues. Um, will you all like, like tweet at me or send me a message on Instagram or whatever platform is best for you. But I would love to hear because I, it feels like I'm losing with data, but I'm, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed throughout the day. I think what we're concluding, I mean, what the data is showing us, Ray, is that uh, the pronunciation is interchangeable and it is depending on the user, depending on the context. And there's really no wrong way to say data unless, of course, it is data. Oh, my gosh, I hate you. OK, wait, the other thing, Brad, is this regional at all? Is, I mean, I haven't been looking at at the mm. people that have been responding but like, is there, is there any regional relationship to this? You know, like, in, we're not going to get into this right now, but you know, it's the debate of like tennis shoes or sneakers or 
gym shoes, that that's a term that's interchangeable that really is identified by region, Coke and soda, pop, which we're not yeah, getting into Ray, I, made on the show. Yeah, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I can tell you that I am probably going to spend a ridiculous amount of time uh, between now and daily drop in researching that. And I will report back to you, uh, if not earlier in one week's time with all of that regional data slash data. You know what, friends? I hope you enjoy your data, data. Uh, we need to get to some holidays, and there are some good ones today. Happy, uh, how are your new gym shoes? Oh, my gosh, Brie. Okay, my new gym shoes are great. I got new gym shoes because I bought a treadmill, and apparently you can't walk barefoot on a treadmill. Brad, did you see that we were talking about that on Monday? Yeah, I did, and I disagree. I think you can, and you may, just as long as the speed is slow enough. You don't want to break a toe. but oh, like Trust me, it's slow. Like, I'm walking at, like, a like a like – a, sloth over on my treadmill but here's the deal guys brie here's what i found gym shoes are ugly like there is no i i think gym shoes are hideous mine are really ugly but i like them brie they're white and hideous so if you want to see a really ugly white gym shoe let me know and i'll uh <laughs> we're moving on from this data to our good news story it is national clam chowder day brad are you a clam chowder lover yeah, I prefer New England uh, cream-based rather than Manhattan tomato-based. But yeah, I, I like both. But yeah, clam chowder, bring it on. This is white. So that would be yeah. the kind you you like, cream-based, right? Prefer. I've had both, but uh, I prefer the cream-based, yeah. I had no idea that that was um, based on area as well. I, I need to go do a clam chowder taste-a-thon and go try all the kinds. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I just was going to say a clam chowder deep dive. But then I think uh, you'd come out and you'd be all creamy and clammy and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did like this because it's not only a National Clam Chowder Day, but it's also National New England Clam Chowder Day a little bit okay. farther down. So that must have been what you meant because both these are, are white, very delicious looking mm -hmm. soups. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, this, it, yeah. Clam chowder, it's considered a soup, isn't it? No? I, I think so. Uh, some might consider it a stew, um, but I consider it, I think, it again, a data data, soup stew. There's The line is so thin there, Ray Hewitt. It's so thin, but uh, yeah. You know what, Brad? Why do we go over the hard-hitting questions on Friday? That's just not what we're doing. <laughs> All right, moving on. It's also Carnival of Brazil. We love celebrating the colorful costumes and music and dancing and parades that come out of this incredible festival. It is National Chocolate-Covered Nut Day. So go oh. find a nut, cover it in chocolate, and enjoy your fabulous day as you debate the data and data. It is National Day of Kuwait. And uh, it's also Skip the Straw Day. So for those of you who are moving away from plastic straws into using a more sustainable solution, today is definitely a day to celebrate you. Skip the straw and uh, try and save the planet alongside us. Last but not least, um, it is a Canadian holiday celebrating um, the smallest Canadian territory. We were discussing that it's, it's Heritage Day. What is that community called? It's Nunavut. Uh, it's uh, Canada's newest or most recent territory. Uh, it's a territory in the uh, eastern part of what was the Northwest Territories, uh, and it is an indigenous uh, territory, indigenous to the Inuit people. Wow, I love it. So mm -hmm. see, there is a lot to celebrate today, kind of all over the world and in food groups. You know, I love a good food holiday, so uh, sign me up. I want to say buenos dias to Josh. Josh is joining us. Good morning, Josh. Uh, amazing feature article on Josh and his incredible high school. Uh, I, I'm, I, it's yeah, Memorial Pathway Academy. Uh, check it out. Uh, incredible. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Josh is one of my favorite contacts with the Teach Better family and is doing incredible work. So good morning, Josh, and thanks for joining us. So powerful. Speaking of which, we'd love to get into kind of discussing our topic this week. There's so much that we're able to discuss and learn from. We want to keep you right here. So as you're looking at your final decisions on choosing data over data, we'll be right back. Good morning, everybody. We are headed into our brainstorm bank. Brad, we get to do this every single day on the show where we kind of pause and just ask our community, hey, friends, do you need anything? You might be problem solving through supporting a student, supporting a staff member, supporting a leader. This is also a great time to bring up your own random questions where you're trying to collect the data to determine which is correct. So if you are debating any big hot topics, feel free to post those in the comments and Brad and I will do our best to be a brainstorm partner with you <laughs> so that we, we don't promise to have all the solutions to all your questions, but we absolutely love to be a safe space for all of you to brainstorm 
a solution or head in the right direction uh, during your day today. Brad, we also had a theme this week that had to do with taking small steps to make really big gains. What was your thoughts on that? Uh, incredible. Uh, I, I love this topic because so often uh, in education and in life, we look for big leaps when really what we can sustain and what is reasonable and practical in any situation is small steps. And sometimes when we're facing really tough challenges, I think about uh, meeting the challenges of, of uh, students learning, social, emotional needs, or even the challenges that we may be facing in our personal professional lives. We, we want big changes because we want relief. We, we want relief from uh, the pain, from the worry, from the stress of whatever is getting us down. And and what we realize too is those small steps can be very, very small, but cumulatively, that's what we can sustain. So uh, this this topic really speaks to my heart, Ray. Mm, yeah, it was a wonderful discussion this week. A great reminder that as we are overwhelmed, as we feel you know quite you know inundated with other responsibilities and tasks, it actually still allows us to work towards our our goals. I really liked that. A lot of the suggestions and steps that we heard this week and especially, you know, that we can reflect on now had to do with like steps that can take you 30 seconds or five minutes. You know, I think some of the hardest parts is that we set very, very large goals and then we find ourselves without the time to begin them. And um, I really appreciate the reminder this week that we can, you know, do better in this area by by committing four minutes to to something that we want to be better in and slowly but surely surely right I mean that's a teach better motto better today better tomorrow but it can be you know 0.3 percent better and that's still a win it, absolutely uh, atomic habits tells us that you know strive for one percent better each day uh Ray Hewitt uh and Adam welcome tell us to strive for your daily best each day and, and regardless of your capacity everyone can give and I think everyone can reasonably commit to giving his or her daily best. Uh, and that's all that we can ask of, of ourselves. And, and I'm going to say to school leaders, that's that's all that we can reasonably ask of each other and, and our school teams. And I'm really grateful to my district leaders uh, here in Ontario, who over the past, I'm going to say two, two and a half years, have really stressed to school leaders, give yourselves permission when you think about those big school improvement goals. And, and they really it really is a data or data driven enterprise, Ray. We take a look at what's the data telling us and what small but important step can we take? Because we also know that staff, in addition to their own teaching and, and instructional loads, that we want to engage them in the process. And so anyway, I'm grateful that my district leaders have given us the go ahead to say, work towards something that is small and achievable and build on that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I I don't, I need to know the page in, and I don't, but um, when we talked about today's best and right. teachers deserve it, I never thought that this would resonate so well with somebody. Like I vividly remember writing that section. I was mm -hmm. sitting at a Starbucks in normal Illinois at a, at a high top table. So like my feet were hanging and I remember writing about it truly almost more therapeutic for myself, talking about my students today's best. And I was so honored, you know, Olivia Chan um, has referenced that in, in writings that she has done and other mm -hmm. pieces. I know uh, Jillian Du Bois have all, has also referenced it. It's so, it's so, I'm so grateful that it was an idea that, that resonated with people because oh, I, we were just doing it in our classroom. Like it wasn't some earth shattering, oh my gosh, Brad, I think this is going to be the moment that people feel good, you know, truly. Um, I, I love it. I, I wish I knew where in the book we discussed it. I had in my mind that it was maybe around page like in the seventies and I'm not, I'm not seeing it easily, but the concept of today's best is, is truly just something that came about because students were, you know, finding themselves, you know, walking into a classroom and, and being asked to give a hundred percent of themselves. We, you know, and, and in some regard that's unrealistic, right? Um, sometimes our best is at a 70% mark, but we can still celebrate that we're giving that 70%. We're, we're giving whatever percentage is our best for that day, even if it's not, you know, at our highest caliber that we might be able to do later that week or previously that week. So um, anyway, if, if you're interested in that section, I can find it. If you direct message me, I will I will send you that that section. It's a really fun story about about students. And I'm, I'm so glad that it resonated with people. So, so true, because I mean, as educators, it is really understandable that it might feel like we are what we do. And mm -hmm. so, you know, depending on our external expectations, the things that we 
either perceive or misperceive that our school leaders and colleagues or kids or families expect of us. But who, I mean, anyway, who among the professions has higher expectations of themselves than educators? It's really incredible. And this is what I, I really honor with the educators that I serve is that your, your inner compass, your inner drive to do and give and contribute and share and love and live it. It's expensive in terms of energy. Like we talk about energy management and Ray, if you give 100% of yourself as an educator, like you're not just an educator, you're a family member, you're a friend, you're a confidant, you're a community member, you're a parent, uh, you're a volunteer. Like you have to make sure that you're managing your energy so you can devote something to those things that are giving back to you. It, it can't be completely expending all the energy and, and being a puddle on the floor. It's got to be, how can I manage my energy so that at least some of the energy I have is connective and restorative? And that comes back to relationships. Do mm -hmm. I have the time and the energy and permission from those around me and ultimately permission for myself, self-compassion to prioritize those relationships. We've got to take that time. It's, it's not all or nothing. It's make sure that you're managing your energy and staying restored and connected. Yeah. Oh, so powerful. I do want to give a shout out to Adam. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Adam. Welcome is a great author to connect with. If you have not connected with him, he was my co-author on this book. Um, he's written a bunch of different pieces that, that can help with some of the topics we're talking about. And I'm even just looking here, one of the endorsements on the back is by Timothy Alexander, who's one of my favorite motivational speakers of all time. And so he's another one. If you're looking for a little boost, if you're looking to help yourself find balance, there's a lot of good people out there doing great work to, to help kind of with the structure of that. Timothy Alexander would be a great one to connect with um, as well. So all the good things going on. Yeah, I think uh, the, the concept Ray of today's best really fits into this week's theme, which is small steps to, to, to big goals, big achievements. And I just want to come back to something that Rachel Stimas said yesterday, and I called it a mic drop moment. And, and she said, yeah, it's one, it, you know, sometimes we're just really focused on putting one foot in front of the other, and that's mm -hmm. okay. But I think she said something like, sometimes it, sometimes all you can do is just keep your feet on the ground just keeping your feet on the ground. And to me, that doesn't mean that you're immobile or paralyzed or not making a difference. It means that you're taking time to stay centered. So maybe if you are having a sort of a 10% today's best day, just keeping yourself centered and present and focused on the moment to moment interactions. And if that's where you're at, that's also worthy. So uh, shout out to Rachel for dropping the mic on that. We step by step, great... or feet on the ground. Yeah, no, we had some great guests. Rachel is definitely one that was so memorable. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I really loved talking to an aspiring educator. I was joking about the show later in my day uh, after interviewing her yesterday morning. And I just have to say, I, I loved interviewing an aspiring educator because I think sometimes the perception of teachers right now, educators right now, is that those people don't exist. That people aren't going into the profession that that there's no hope for education, that we're in this downward spiral. I'm not saying we have areas to improve, friends. We have plenty of work to be done in this field. For sure. It was such a wonderful reminder that there are incredible, passionate people entering into our field that it gave me hope. I really loved interviewing her. Would you like to get into you know our weekly recap and obviously getting into next week as well? I'd love that. All right. This is our favorite jingle, friends. And so whether you are a data person or a data person, Take this moment because this sound makes my day every week. Brad, you're not going to believe me that I just kind of like clicked on. I'm like, oh, what's the theme next week? You're going to giggle so much. <laughs> I'm looking you know, forward to it. <laughs> you know what next week's theme is? Uh, I've forgotten, but I'm, I'm I'm about to be reminded and delighted. I am thrilled you've forgotten because I cannot wait to tell you and see your reaction. <laughs> Let's first recap our week. As many of you know, on the 21st, we started Monday morning with the one and only Jeff Gargas. Uh, super fun conversation. Yeah. And we did get into some Teach Better shenanigans on that show. It seems to be every Monday, unfortunately. Yeah, I think one of the secret ingredients in the secret sauce is shenanigans. I think that mm -hmm. I, 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 sorry, a, a healthy heaping portion of shenanigans, a, a lot of shenanigans. There you go. Ridiculous, ridiculous. <laughs> On Tuesday, um, we actually had a change in plans. We had mm -hmm. Aaron Healy join us, who's a member of the Teach Better team, a very new member of our internal team, mm -hmm. but she's been in our community for so long. She's in a high school coach in, um, 
in Rhode Island. And holy yeah. moly, I love visiting Rhode Island. I visited her and her, the work that she's done twice in Rhode Island before. Uh, obviously, now as a team member, I get to engage with her. You get to engage with her so much more frequently. Mm -hmm. But she was wonderful to interview because she has so much insight to share. It's true. And uh, really appreciate that she was available and uh, and able to jump on with you uh, mm -hmm. last minute on on uh, Tuesday morning. And again, just, just growing our network and growing our ability and capacity to connect with people with great ideas. And like you said about Rachel, I mean, the, the energy, I mean, we, we have to honor and celebrate the energy with which people are doing their great work. And we, we want to make sure we're challenging the narrative that, you know, we, we know educators are worn out, tired out, dispirited, but there, there's also tremendous inspiration to be taken in energy and, and, and she really brought it. That is something I really wish I had touched on earlier in the show. When we talked about our week, I was inspired by so many educators this mm -hmm. week. Like this afternoon, I get to see uh, Jackie Mosian, who's a part of our ambassador group. I've been following her career since she was in college. Erin Healy, who was on the show on Tuesday, I've been following her career since her first year of teaching. Yeah. Um, I got to connect with Lori, who's a very, very active member in our daily drop-in live comments here. Uh, we got to chat yesterday, and she was telling me about this like wonderful idea she has that she wants to start a podcast to support families. Yeah. I mean, I talked to Rachel. I interviewed her on Thursday. That's an aspiring educator. Mm -hmm. This really was a, a wonderful reminder of powerful and inspiring educators that exist in our network. It's so fun. hundred percent. And that's part of the opportunity that we have Ray, you and me and our daily drop in uh, co-hosts and friends is, mm -hmm. is uh, amplifying those stories, you know, focusing on people who are uh, taking their thoughts and feelings and their intentions and putting them in action. And, uh, you know, all of us have something to learn from each other. And it's, I'm just grateful that people continue to want to step up and, and offer a little of themselves on a, on an, on an early morning, uh, early morning uh, teacher talk radio show. Yes, I couldn't agree more. On Wednesday, we had a conversation with Marcus. Marcus is not mm -hmm. only an outstanding high school principal, he also is the president of the Illinois Principals Association. He is also part of our 12 hour live. And Brad, you are interviewing him. That man is full of high energy. He is full of inspiration. And he is the perfect person for you to be on screen with on Saturday. Oh. Uh, I had a chance to catch up with Marcus on the weekend as we were uh, getting ready for our 12 hour live session. I wanted a chance to get to know him and, and, and just really feel the heart of him. And like you said, his energy, his passion, his determination, his personal story of growth as an educator and all that he's pouring into his, uh, his high school, really looking forward to our, uh, our session. I think that is uh, 7 PM tomorrow. It is. Yeah. Eastern, right? 7 PM yep. Eastern. Yeah. That's right. Um, and then obviously we had Rachel on on Thursday, who we referenced numerous times throughout the show. I just thought that she was so wonderful. She told me before we went live, and she might kill me that I told her this, that I told this on, on, on air, but she was like, I'm so nervous. I've never done this before. I'm not sure. And she just did wonderfully. So definitely go check out that Thursday episode. Mm -hmm. For next week, friends, we have a brand new theme. Every single week, we have a new theme that we bring to our conversation. Obviously, new guests that we're able to have. And there's a lot to celebrate. So, Brad, I'm going to try and summarize quickly. But there is a lot going on next week here on the Teach Better team. For the daily drop-in theme, I will read it word for word from the list that I am given by our, by our um, internal team. It says, research into action, working through data to, cl <laughs> to close, close to home to find solutions for our students. So let me tell you, friends, data came up again. <laughs> I can't believe that. Oh, we're going to have a great week ahead, though. <laughs> I do love the focus, though. This theme really is inspiring that we're going to take research and ensure that that becomes action steps. I love that we're going to work with information that we are that is easily accessible, readily accessible, mm -hmm. and it makes sure that we are working towards solutions for our students. That's exciting. <laughs> really exciting. Uh, guests on the show, obviously, we will start Monday morning with Jeff Gargas live with me on Monday. Uh, we will also be uh, celebrating that it will be the last day for early bird registration, $100 off the Teach Better conference happening October 14th and 15th. And we'll be announcing one of our keynotes. And that will be a huge moment. Um, for those of you who have been following the daily drop in uh, over the years, you will be very familiar with this incredible keynote, and we cannot wait for them to be celebrated. We will be doing a little teaser during 12 hours, so maybe you'll be able to guess ahead of time, but uh, that will be what we'll be talking about on Monday. On Tuesday, we'll continue forward. We'll have Sarah Lane with us on Tuesday as a guest. Wednesday, we have uh, Brian Callahan joining us. And then on Thursday, we have, um, oh, Tom, uh, 
oh my gosh, Herrick, who is um, somebody that I've been dying to interview. So I'm very excited to have Tom on on Thursday. And then no surprise there, uh, Brad, will be celebrating together on that Friday. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, uh, Ray, I'm not sure if there's any other celebrations uh, planned in your world or your school, but I I, I want to come back to a comment from uh, from Brienne here. And I think Brienne has like a champion pep rally cheer she wants to suggest. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. Soup is thin. Stew is chunky. I think that could be like a huge pep rally chant. Uh, and I mean, we talk about data, data, uh, soup, stew, thin, chunky, uh, sneakers, gym shoes. I mean, no, no matter how you slice it, you know, it's what we bring to our interactions, what we bring to the people around us that that really makes it unique. So soup is thin, stew is chunky. And Brienne, if, you, if you're not already in a marketing department, I think you got to get on that right now. Sounds like she, I mean, thank God she is, right? Thank God yeah. that she is managing so many things over on our internal team. I love it. Oh my gosh, Brad, so much to celebrate the next week. And then also on Friday, Brad, I don't know if this counts, but next Friday is the 4th. My birthday is Sunday. Yeah. So I think we get to celebrate on Friday. And then I think I might also be able to argue that I get to celebrate with Jeff on Monday. And I think it's a win. I'm pretty sure. Oh, you sure do. I mean, yeah, yeah. If Celebrating Friday, like you can have a whole, like you can set aside the whole weekend for uh, birthday celebrations and just let the celebration continue. We look forward to celebrating with you. Yep. I'll have the cake, candles and birthday hats ready. I'm just a little jealous because we got to celebrate your birthday live on the show. Yeah. And I, I can't wait. What would it be like for every day that it moves? I have to wait like seven years for it to fall on a Friday. So right. I'm, just, I'm just deciding, like, can we just decide it's next, it's next Friday. I'll just, I'll move my birthday if that's okay with you. That's perfectly okay with me. Hey, it's your birthday. You move it if you want. Love it. Friends, please know that if you need anything, we are here to support you, celebrate you. Thank you for tuning into our Friday show here on February 25th. We are excited to say that while we hope to see you bright and early Monday morning, we actually are more excited to also see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern. We'll be live for 12 hours long where we will be changing up different guests and different themes with different segments for 12 hours. It is free professional development for all educators. We're focusing on supporting classroom teachers, coaches, administrators, principals, superintendents, directors of curriculum, anything in between. We encourage you to share this information with your friends and family, and we hope that you tune in live with us as we stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn. Brad, thanks so much for, for talking shop with us here. It's awesome. I, I love our Friday shows, Ray, and it leaves me feeling energized, ready for a great day, and want to wish you and everybody watching and listening, whether you're live or later, a wonderful day, a great weekend ahead, uh, and look after yourselves. Look after yourselves and the people that you care about. Mm, so, so important. We'll see you later, friends. Have a wonderful Friday. Bye.